Hello and welcome to the Rioho Wellness Podcast. This is Margit Jefferson and I am here with Andre Gospodarczyk, the founder of Rioho. The vision behind Rioho Wellness is to create a tipping point in wellness worldwide. And this podcast will contribute towards that. In each episode, we explore different health issues that present as case studies in Andre's practice. They range from everyday common health problems through to extremely serious health issues and illnesses. We explore body parts and how they respond to nutrition and environment. And we work on inspiring people to change their life for good through an everyday wellness focus. Rioho is a wellness modality that is unique because it focuses on healing and wellness through basic food and exercises that maneuver the body back to a state of balanced health. People literally jump out of their skin with energy and vitality when they follow Rioho. And it's an incredible turnaround for many who have had low energy for years through to people who have had complex health issues that don't seem to budge. The podcast is an interview format and ranges from 20 to 60 minutes. And if you'd like more of an introduction on Andre, please see the three minute introduction in the first podcast on the homepage. And at the end, I'll be here to give you a little bit more information. So without further ado, let's get into this episode. Next week is Chinese New Year, which is traditionally a massive celebration of the new lunar year throughout much of Asia. And this year it is Year of the Pig. So Happy New Year for next week. Given that Rioho comes from the very deep foundations of Far Eastern medicine and philosophy, we thought it was absolutely fitting to record this first podcast to mark the new 2019 year. This podcast is in two parts and with Andre we explore a little bit of the paradigm of wellness within our lives today and we hope you enjoy. The first question I would like to ask you is about the 2019 year. What are your opening thoughts? What are you excited about? What do you think about this year that's coming up? Interesting. It's a good question because it's all relative, this idea of a new year. It's a man-made construct. Yes, there's the lunar cycles and there is seasonal cycles and we celebrate in different aspects of these patterns. It's like dawn and dusk and noon and midnight. These are important events, but the human construct, the artificial idea of a new year starting in January is interesting because it's something that we all agree upon and get all excited about and have fireworks and big parties, but it, it doesn't really exist. A solstice exists as a, a stepping stone into a, a new event and the big events of beginning of spring and beginning of summer, these are, are major events. There's certainly something to pay attention to in terms of natural cause and effect, but the artificial construct of having a, a new year on a particular day at a particular time that you count down to, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, is um, quite interesting, isn't it? 2019 for me is a world thing. Is I'm seeing it as a general deterioration of the human situation, and I'm very excited about seeing what will happen next. Now, for me, illness is part of the process of being healthy. The big difference between being healthy and not being healthy is that you recover. In other words, everyone catches little colds and we cut ourselves and we bump ourselves and we get tired and we have good feelings and we have bad feelings. The difference is when you're healthy that you recover. It's an important concept for everyone to understand that the big difference is that when you get very, very sick is when you can't recover from a small event. A cold turns into pneumonia. We all get some form of cancer. It all lives in us, but some people recover, others don't. Any person who's you know over 60, 70, you can examine their body internally and see scars from recovering from cancer. It's whether you can recover from a situation or not determines whether you're healthy or not. 
And what I'm seeing with people on the planet is very interesting where I see the world as a lot of individuals making up one big individual, the same way as a human being is made up of a lot of different disparate cells, a lot of different parts working together. I also see the human race that way as a lot of different parts working together. You have the village of different people working together in the village, and then between the villages you have trade, between the different countries you have trade, you have communication, or you can have a village where the leader is not very good, or people are undermining it, or there's fighting within the village, and then it all falls apart. The same thing can happen between villages, between countries. And then you have very big problems. Then you have depressions. Then you have world economic collapse. Or you can have what's happening now, which is if we look at an individual, we can see that different parts of a body not cooperating and poor blood circulation, poor distribution of nutrient, not a lot of internal dialogue may be happening for an individual, not knowing what they need to fulfill themselves and grow as a human being. Maybe they're just stimulating themselves with sugar and coffee, having drugs to make themselves feel better, and maybe being very materialistic and not following a dream or not having a long-term plan. Now, that's what I see happening to the world at the moment is as a human being, our species as a human race is not very long-term planning using stimulation to get through the day. Economically, we're in massive debt, and I see that as energetic debt, the same way that debt grows when you're living on coffee and drugs and sugar, where you need that constant stimulation and very poor communication and a lot of stress between the different parts. And as communication systems grow, we seem to be communicating less. So it's very interesting to see what happens this year because I think we're reaching some kind of crisis point where we're going to have to go one way or the other. And when I see people as individuals, they make a decision. What's the difference between a person who fights to be okay? What's the difference between a person who immediately turns around and says, somebody fix me? and give me the drugs and do the operation to a person saying, no, I'm going to figure out why I have this situation. Why do I have this problem? How do I deal with the cause of this problem as opposed to somebody fix me, please? There's a big difference between those two situations. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens this year. And I think this year is going to be that kind of time. So I'm watching with wide eyes, as you might say. So interesting times, Margit. Let's see what happens, because I think we're on the edge a little bit. As everyone is saying, it's not just me. So we'll see what happens, hey, Margit? We'll see what 2019 does. Yeah, so that's a really good opening perspective coming into the 2019 year from a Rioho Wellness point of view. So... This may or may not be relevant, but are you picking up on anything that is new and different about this year so far than years gone past? I guess I'm not talking from an esoteric point of view, but I'm just saying, are you seeing, are you seeing anything that's different that is making you sit up and, and notice that's about this year so far? This year so far, much more than any other year, is an extreme keenness about nutrition, food, more so than any other time I've seen. So it's more in the newspapers, it's more in the media generally, but also between people talking about what they should eat, what they shouldn't eat, and a lot of fad diets and a lot of ideas about nutrition. So I'm seeing that more than ever, and it's grown exponentially. It's skyrocketing as a topic. It's more interesting for everyone than ever before. So that's one definite thing that I'm seeing. And another thing I'm seeing as part of that is very poor health in a lot of people all the time. Now, it's very interesting for me to see how quickly everyone is breaking down. I mean, on a world scale, it's happening very quickly, and we're all connected. 
whether people like that idea or not. But as human beings, we really are connected to each other and we pick up on each other's problems a little bit. So the community you're living in, you pick up on that, let's say, energy, feeling. There's also environment where you, you know, there are lots of pollution and noise, all the rest of it. No matter how healthy you're trying to be, and this is my main concern, of course, is health, you still pick up on other people's issues a lot. So you're trying to eat well and meditate a little bit and live a, a lovely lifestyle, but you're picking up on everything around you in terms of the pollution in your food, the pollution in the air, noise, electromagnetics, radiation. It's, it's bombarding you. So you need to step out of that society maybe and find a, a place which is less harmful and you'll find that you feel a lot, lot better. So it's a bit like the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, where if you don't leave, you're going to go down with it. So or maybe people, that's not a good reference for them, but there's a, a lovely biblical story about a guy and his family and the angels come and tell him to leave because the town is going to be destroyed because it's so sinful. And he tries to find some good people, but he fails miserably <laughs> and has to leave. And yeah, so it's, it's a story, though. It's, it's a good analogy for people to understand. You can be in environments that harm you, even though you're doing the best. Your fate is tied with the people you hang around with. It, it makes a big impact on you, where you live and the atmosphere you're part of. And even though you're trying to do very well with your health, maybe the atmosphere you're living in is damaging and it can harm you. And I see that a lot. The world's sort of deteriorating very quickly. Lots of health. But on the other hand, I'm seeing the rise of things like good quality of food. Everywhere I look, I see organic vegetables available. I see different exercise classes everywhere. I see massage, nutrition, tai chi, everything popping up all over the place as a response to this problem. So I'm, I'm just hoping the quality is there for everyone. I hope they pick up on it and see the responsibilities we all have to take care of ourselves. So I'll be interested to see what happens. But generally speaking, I'm, I'm, what I'm seeing is very quick deterioration uh, on a world scale, China is having massive problems with diabetes, um, with cancer. Uh, it's in the thousands on a weekly basis in China now that people are turning up with cancer diagnosis, in the thousands. In Japan, we're having massive problems. Uh, the obesity thing now, as we learned last year, it's an epidemic now where more people are dying from obesity than starvation now. It's a very big problem. It's a massive. Two out of three people in Australia, very overweight. That's quite unusual now. That's quite sudden too. So we're in that situation and I'm, I'm seeing it around me this year. It's a, a sudden thing. I'm just in the last little while and now it's quite sudden. So maybe it's my perception only because I'm involved in that so much, but it's certainly what I'm seeing, Maggie. Completely agree. I think it's very obvious within the communities more and more how unwell people are becoming. And to your point, who you hang out with, you either influence or become. And um, that lends itself nicely to that biblical story that you were talking about as the analogy. Moving on from there, and it's a nice segue, apart from the obvious health benefits why should people care about a strong focus on wellness? And what I'm asking here is, what is the compelling reason beyond health? What's the impact and flow on effects that wellness can have on the rest of your life? And I'm talking about, you know, your, your family and your work and your social environment. What's a compelling reason to really be well? Mm, that's the best question I've been asked in a very, very long time. I'm trying very hard to tell everyone around me that there's a lot, lot more to being healthy than the absence of pain. If it was just the absence of pain, it, it'd be so simple to just fix up the anatomy and physiology of a person and they can get on with their lives. Uh, but it's not that simple. Human beings are intricately tied in 
to their physiology. So the things, the relative relationships of happiness, sadness, the relative functions of feeling glad about something or feeling a sense of loss. So what I mean by relative functions is that these feelings of progress, evolution, withdrawal, connection, love, these are things that happen based on something existing or not existing in terms of a relationship between things. So the relationship between things is the relative world and the body is a manifestation of that. The body is a a function that exists because it has some kind of existence that comes into being and then stops being, a beginning and an end. So these feelings of happiness, sadness, these feelings of I exist or I don't exist, these, these are relative functions. And we need the body to be well, to have some kind of normalcy in our feelings. When the body is unwell, we can have abnormal feelings. And it's an interesting thing that people do, and it's very obvious that they have things to feel better. So the the upshot of all of that is that not well, you feel emotionally and intellectually uncomfortable. You can feel very irritable. You can feel very angry. So having a sick gallbladder or a sick liver or poor skin or being overweight influences your existence on this planet. So if we eat a little bit too much sugar, if we have too much alcohol, it can make us miserable. It'd be okay if just the body was sick, but it makes you sick as a person. The repercussions of being unwell are that you can be extremely unhappy. So as people get more sick, they become more fussy. They become more grumpy. They can become more arrogant even. And the typical extreme of illness is arrogance. Part of illness is saying, I know better than everyone else. That's an arrogant attitude. Another kind of arrogant attitude is poor me. Everything happens to me. And people live this way in misery and in arrogance. But as you get healthier, as you tackle your physical health, your perceptions of reality literally change because the body is a manifestation of our perceptions of reality. So if we can get rid of our arrogance and say, okay, I don't know better than the rest of the world, I'm going to listen to the world, and we realize that something else is making our heart beat, that something else is making our lungs work, that we wake up in the morning, not based on our will, but on a gift that we've been given, which is the wonder of having an existence. And like my darling friend, Sister Betty, who was a wonderful nun who created a lot of the fine, invaluable uh, education systems in the Catholic system in Australia here, she rightly pointed out to us all that the grass around us really doesn't need us, but we need the grass, that we should be a little bit grateful and a little bit humble. And in that gratitude and humility, we can then drop our arrogance and listen to how the world talks to us and how our bodies talk to us and have the peace and the quiet. So this year, like I was saying before, I'm, th- I'm thinking that we're coming to some sort of crisis point and it feels that way. I can see it around me and I think we can drop our arrogance maybe a little bit, which is part of illness where we're not listening and thinking that we know better than the rest of the world that is actually giving us everything, and get a little bit of humility and gratitude for the little things around us. And it's going to be a big step, but that that's the big step that is required for us as individuals. And maybe we go up and down, maybe as all of us do over the Christmas break, we had some food that didn't suit us, but it just reminds us of why we do the things that we do. And 
gladly step back into maybe not an austere life, but a more supportive life. And it's not to do with suffering, but it's to do all to do with taking away the things that cause struggle and not compensating for those struggles, but actually taking away the things that create struggle. And that's what would be a wonderful thing this year. And I think we actually need it. So the feelings that we have, they come from our body. Now, it's very simple for all of you. If you don't understand what I'm saying, just have a listen to this very simple idea. We take wine to make us happy. So what you're doing is having some food that changes your chemistry, which of course is your physical body. And it changes your mood. It changes your personality. It can make you an idiot. It can make you funny. It can make you courageous. It can make you laugh in the face of danger just by having a couple of glasses of some wine, maybe. People take ecstasy or drugs that are dangerous, of course, because it, it shifts your whole perception of reality. It makes you love everyone. So changing your physical body, changing the chemicals, changing the nature of the relationship between different parts of your body, it can change everything about you as a person. So having a, a healthy, strong body and calm is extremely important just for your normal state of mind. And normal state of mind is naturally humble, grateful, compassionate, and outgoing and eager, just like a child. That's a normal, much more normal state. Oh, you can give them some red cordial or some sugar and then watch them go crazy. And it's a good example of what happens to us as people. So, Margit, so the important thing is to for everyone to know that it influences you way beyond your body when you're sick. And we might have had it for 10, 20, 30 years or right back to our childhood, we might have had the similar problem and we think it's normal to be irritable all the time. Maybe it's normal to be anxious all the time. We think it's normal to be arrogant and demanding and pushy or pathetic and miserable. We might think that's normal, but it's actually not. And you don't realize that until you get a little bit healthy and become your true self and unique in yourself. That's the other thing about being healthy is that you can take away the influences of the foods. Everyone who eats the same food becomes the same way. So everyone who drinks alcohol becomes as annoying as anyone else drinking alcohol. Anyone having ecstasy feels the same as everyone else having ecstasy. But if you get healthy, you become yourself. And that is totally unique and much more powerful and dynamic and exciting than anyone on drugs. And I consider things like coffee, drugs, and sugar as drugs, and they have a very big influence. It's just because we're having a lot of it in our society, and a lot is doesn't take much to affect us. I mean, if we think about how much we have and we think, oh, I only have one or two teaspoons of sugar a day, white sugar a day, or I only have this amount of maple syrup a day, it's not, not much. But try not having it and see how that influences you. And if it makes no difference, then you're fine, but you have to be the judge of that. But try not having it and see if it does. And if you really miss it, then we're having a problem. So I know that's a big answer to the question, but it's a very big question. So I hope that makes some sense. It is a big question and all of the questions in this podcast are really big ones and we could easily have one podcast per question, but we'll try and get through them all. Looking back on the last year of podcasts and all the amazing work we're doing at Rioho Wellness, I think one of the biggest fundamentals that will be on our agenda is really what the definition of being sick is. Because I think that there's so many people out there who say, I'm not sick, I'm not unwell. And these people have physical complaints such as headaches or migraines. They're overweight, they have back aches or knee problems, hormonal problems, hip problems, anger, anxiety, negativity, controlling behavior, arrogance, as you've said, and the list goes on. But people don't define those things as being unwell or sick. And I think that that is a really big issue in the community because 
it's obviously a gap. If people define these things as indicators that they really are not 100% well, maybe that would start to shift things a little bit for them to start to realize that there is another way. Mm. The problem is compounded by the medical profession now presenting these sorts of very serious problems that people are having as bad luck. So if you turn up with some serious problem these days and you say, why have I got lung cancer, do you think, doctor? The doctor will say, well, it's genetic and it's just bad luck. And it's really the wrong thing to be thinking. It's not bad luck. We all have weaknesses. And our job as human beings is to use our talent but work on your weaknesses. It's normal for all of us to have some kind of exception one way or the other. That makes a little bit of the difference. As a race, we have things to work on. As a culture, there's things that cultures have within them that make balance for individuals. And so within certain cultures, they're set up in their traditions to make balance. You take people out of that culture, sometimes they feel at a loss in how to behave and how to relate to each other. And as individuals, we need certain things in our lives to make us okay. In other words, work on your weaknesses always. That's your responsibility and use your talent to benefit others around you. These sorts of things that I say might sound difficult, but in fact, having these ideas in your head as a normal state, it gives you some way of behaving in the face of the unknown. The unknown is when we get scared, when you don't know what to do. When you in a new situation, we get uncomfortable and defensive and panic. But it's nice to have this bigger picture of understanding of how the world operates and what we should do in the face of the unknown. So it's good to have these big pictures. Yeah. So it's, it's nice to know that being grateful and humble is the correct response. It really is the correct response in different situations. And you can fall back on those ideas. I mean, for a little while there, the world thought that greed was good. But of course, it's not. You know, But that was the general idea. Now we think being aggressively demanding is good. Where get what you want, no matter what the cost. And if you have lots and lots of money, you'll be accepted as a good person. But that's not true. It's, but that's what's happening. And that's the accepted idea now. So people are being ruthless and rude, and that's accepted as a normal behavior. But it's actually wrong. And so having higher ideals and knowing how the world really works and knowing the truth is it's very important in the face of the unknown. And we've grown into these ideas, and it's nice if we grow out of them a little bit and know how to behave in different circumstances. By being in different cultures, we can see that people behave differently. There's a wonderful friend who was a lobbyist, and he was an exceptional lobbyist. And this was in the era within Australia that was very left-wing. And he was so good as a lobbyist that he was seconded to America to back up the first George Bush. He was very right-wing at the time. And in Australia, he was despised by his family and his friends because at that time in Australia, the world was very left-wing. And when he went to America, they made him travel a lot to try and get the first George Bush into office. And he went to Africa and England and all over America and all these different countries. And, blah, blah, blah. and he said, in my travels, what happened was I was exposed to many different cultures and people with many different problems. And then he realized that his way of thinking wasn't so good. And he said, if you meet enough people and see enough of the world and open your eyes wide enough, you can't help but become socialist. You start caring about people in a different way, which was a very interesting comment. I mean, maybe this doesn't happen to everyone, but this happened to him. And so what he did then was came back to Australia and he tried to push for the socialist thing more. But by then we'd shifted and we were very right-wing. We then had a right-wing government. 
And he said, and everyone hated me again, <laughs> which is interesting. So, But the idea of us all just recognizing those people around us and seeing different cultures and talking to people about their feelings and who they are and where they came from, not us always talking about our issues, but listening to other people, I think, would be a wonderful Wonderful thing for this year, and not just talking about our needs all the time to other people, but sit and listen. You learn a lot and you grow a lot if you listen. There's a lovely saying, which is, you know, you can't hear anything if you're talking. <laughs> That's just so true. And I was having a giggle at myself as you were saying that. But anyway, I think that what you've talked about is very easy to understand. But I think that in talking through and looking at our community and seeing people in our community who don't think that they're sick and that they're not unwell, it's a quantum leap. And so framing wellness in such a way and educating people that wellness can be a secret weapon for good, for the betterment of their life, and really saying, well, these conditions, you might not be sick, but you're not 100% jumping out of your skin with energy and vitality. And and if you are, then you're going to have better relationships. You're going to have better results in your life, better family scenarios, more success, more output, more productive. And even though they are uh, materialistic concepts, I think that framing wellness as a secret weapon, and if people can get that connection, really get it, then you know maybe they're going to sit up and pay more attention to those symptoms that they're experiencing. But for now, they're not. Wellness is just some concept that the allied health profession and talk about. So th- there's a gap here that's going on. And is that gap there because it's just too hard? Or is it because people haven't been educated in that way? Or what's going on there? And I'm trying to think about it from a listener's point of view where they might be looking at their family saying, well, my family member does has, have migraines. They are overweight. They are angry or they do suffer anxiety and, and they're symptoms of not being well. But how can I educate them and how can I understand that more, that wellness is a secret weapon so that maybe they do take that first step if they're, you know, if they're ready to take that first step, obviously. If we look at ourselves, and we're all the same, you know, all of us is just another version of ourselves. Uh, I know that's a big statement, but it's absolutely true. We're, We're just all human beings, and we're all going through very similar stuff. And our reactions to things are the same as other people's reactions to things. It's only a matter of degree. And what motivates us as an individual to make big changes in our lives is the same as other people. But, of course, if you get down to it at the grindstone, it's pain is a very good motivator and also discomfort on milder levels. And then as you become a bit lighter in yourself and realize that good feelings and pleasure can be pursued, not just pain avoided. But these things happen in degrees. Now, people don't motivate themselves and don't grow up to being responsible as an adult without going through some steps. So our own process is we try and get away with things and let the animal part of us dominate, and then we realize that that's not the right way. What helps enormously is seeing those around us having success. Now, you as an individual can't change anyone. I can't change anyone. No, the only thing you can change is yourself. So all you can do with other people is be a good example. That's it. And if we look through history, that's exactly what you will see from all the great people in our past is all they can do is be a good example. The real responsibility of each individual is to look after themselves. And it's the very nature of being is that as individuals, the success of our lives comes from us overcoming our own issues. And it's relative. I mean, what one overcomes in one's life might be only a little thing, but it was big for them compared to what another person goes through. 
might seem huge, but that's what they needed to go through and that's what they're going through and that's what they can deal with. So what we're dealing with in each of our lives is what we need to deal with. I see the universe as a really loving parent. Just watch how the world works. It's very, very simple. First, what the universe says to anyone doing the wrong thing is it taps you gently on the shoulder and it says, uh, don't do that, darling. It's not the right thing. And so you get this little distraction from your normal life of this little feeling that what I'm doing is not correct. A little message comes and we know, we can feel it. Even a great scientist who has many letters after their names and it's all based on researching ice cream as a healthy food, chocolate as the right sort of thing to eat to make you happy. Coca-Cola is a great thing. So this scientist has spent his life researching how terrific these things are for you. Even he will sit down to a piece of cheesecake and go, oh my God, what a treat. Because in our heart we know. And so the universe taps us a little bit on the shoulder and says, sweetheart, that's not the right thing to do. We all know what the right thing to do is and isn't on those subtle levels. When I see people, they come to me and I say to them, okay, it looks like you're having way too much fruit. And their eyes will go wide and they'll say, oh my God, I knew you were going to say that. Because they know. Or I say to them, you have to give up on the dairy products. You've had far too much. They go, oh no, that's the one thing I didn't want you to do. Because they knew. It's easy to give up the things that we are not attached to. It's the things we're attached to that is our problem. And we know what we're attached to. We know it's how to give them up. What do you do to deal with these problems and these issues on a subtle level. On a subtle level, you can't just change. What you have to do is fix your body a little bit and then your mind shifts. And then in your mind shifting, you can fix your body a little bit more and then your mind shifts again. So it's through your relative body functions and a little tiny bit of discipline, a little bit of understanding. You can make little changes every day that then leads to huge results, massive results. Right, so the universe works on a subtle level that way, but also it works on a little bit rougher level. So as a parent, if you're not listening as a child, the parent will then say, tap, tap a little bit stronger on the shoulder and say, look at me, I'm talking to you, what you're doing is the wrong thing and there's going to be consequences. And so the distraction is greater. And then the next step is the parent will grab you by the arm and say, okay, okay, that, that's enough. And explain why it's enough. And if that doesn't work, then the parent will say, sit down, stop until you learn how to behave. And that's when we become immobile. Our arm won't lift up anymore. Our back stops working. We can't walk anymore. We've got constant pain in the head, we can't breathe, and so we finally reach that stage where the universe is saying, just stop. And the universe inflicts discomfort the same way as a parent does traditionally. I mean, now the pain is dealt out in a different way. The, the pain is, okay, you will not have a phone, you will not have Wi-Fi, you will not have sports day you can't go on the excursion and so there is your discomfort there is your lack of privileges which is the same as pain of course there's no different so that's the way i see the universe as a very loving parent and for people of all types and all individuals depending where you're at you're either in that pain state or you're in that I'm listening, but I can't understand what you're saying, state. I will just follow your lead. So a lot of people are in that midway state where they don't know how to behave and they're just following the rules that the parents are laying down. And we'd have to do that as a teenager or as a child or as a sick person. There's rules to follow because you can't trust yourself. If you're following your own instincts, you're going to just end up in trouble as a teenager because they're not responsible. When you're sick, you're not responsible. You have to follow rules. And so the rules are things that are based on your particular condition. So when you're not well with food, you have a digestive problem, one of the rules is you need to chew. 
it's extremely important. And you need to have simple, good food because your natural desire is to have lots of sugar and eat junk food. And you can't trust that judgment. It's not right. So you have to follow the rules. And you have to do that with gratitude and humility and self-care and respect for the universe and for yourself. And then later on, you can actually hear the parent or see their disapproval and go, oh, yeah, 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 I know, I know. Okay, good. So I ate a little bit too much this morning and I can feel that. And so tomorrow I won't. You become your own parent in a way. So the, the only thing for people of all types is to follow their feelings and how we can influence other people is by being a good example and showing them how well they are. So my example was the same as everyone else's example, which was meeting someone that I was impressed by. I met people who were magnificent and people would say to them, you are exceptional. You are magnificent. You are a, a saint. And all of these people had the same response, which was, no, 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 no. I am normal. You are just really messed up. So meeting people, coming across people that you admire and following their lead is the only real path to self-development because as human beings, we need to learn how to support ourselves. Humans can indulge themselves by using their minds and separate themselves from nature. We build houses, we build clothes, we heat our environment, we cool our environment, we separate ourselves from nature using our minds. And then we need to stimulate ourselves based on our minds and our understanding, use our minds and understanding to consciously adapt to our surroundings. So we need to do things that maintain our basic physical health. Being healthy is a natural thing. So living a primitive lifestyle is the surest, quickest way to become physically healthy again. But that's not how we live. We live in an artificial environment. So society has developed these wonderful tools that allow us to maintain our health within our artificial environments. And it's a good thing because it gives us the time to develop art and music and communication and evolve and follow the unfolding dream of humanity. We are creating ourselves out of our own imagination in creating these environments. And it's our journey, and that's okay. But we do need to maintain our health, and we can do that by meeting other healthy people, seeing what works for them, understanding the principles, and then very simply applying themselves uh, those principles to ourselves. It won't be exactly as it is for that person. It'll be what you need. Uh, pain might be the motivator for some people. There's people in situations where none of this makes sense to them, but pain is the motivator for them, and eventually they say, okay, okay, what do I need to do? Pain and fear. And it works, and the stuff that we advocate through the Rioho understanding is it works. And it gives you great results and fast, extremely effective and comprehensive results. And that's what matters in the end. And those results, taking you out of pain and making you feel better, that's what matters. And that's, that's what's going to create the changes in the world is results. So if someone comes to me with cluster headaches or a bad neck or a bad back, and they're in pain, and you take that pain away from them by giving them simple advice and guidance, and it works, and it works really well, then they'll say, oh, what else can I do? And then that relief of pain will guide them on their journey to real wellness, not just relief of pain, but abundant energy, being part of our natural environment of air and sun and trees and buildings and all the rest of it, and abundance comes to your life. And that means wealth in money, it means wealth in people, it means wealth in experiences and honesty and communication on, on all levels, and just the joy of existence, which when you're sick is really quite terrible. And so now we have 
suicide is a very big issue. It's just terrible, the amount of suicide we're going through. It's one of the biggest killers we've got now. And it's because people don't know what to do. It's just a way out from their heartache. And they're not even physically sick, but on the more subtle levels. But of course, that's what wellness means to us, where you're working on your body to get rid of those subtle levels of disorder also, where it's not medically diagnosed. You don't have a medical differential diagnosis syndrome where you can't label it and attack it and kill it because we understand that illness is a part of health. It's a stepping stone to health. It's a sign to health. It's telling us what to do. Illness is telling us what to do. So people with serious problems and people with little problems, it's the same process and it's the same process for all of us as individuals. All of us as individuals, just look at yourself, know what motivates you, what has motivated you in the past and it might have been simple things like just getting rid of pain and suddenly getting rid of pain, getting rid of it in the right way makes you grow as a human being. So there's our simple guide for all of us is find someone else who's gotten the great results. We all do this instinctively, of course, the people we admire. Every city, every village used to have a statue of a hero or an icon, an icon of greatness, whether it was religious figures like saints or whether it was great heroes that we admired who sacrificed their their existence for another person. These were our heroes. Of course, now we've got celebrities as our heroes, movie stars, that if you really, if you met them one-on-one, -on -one, you wouldn't be so impressed as we're discovering now, aren't we? We're discovering that the false icons around us, aren't they? If you met these people, you'd see they're just normal people. They're not someone to actually follow. There are people to follow, and they're the ones who are healthy, vibrant, happy. If you meet someone that's happy, vibrant, and well, and optimistic, then follow their way. Try and see what they're doing, how they live. And don't be daunted by it either, because it's just the little steps that matter. And then suddenly you're doing an enormous amount where it's hard to eat simple, wholesome food initially, and your body adapts to that quite quickly. And you go, oh, I can't live without it now. In fact, I don't even want to eat junk food anymore. I've changed, and that's what change is. You actually change. Pain is a good motivator. It's great, and that's our first step for a lot of us. To summarize that, and from a wellness point of view, what you're really saying is to be the shining light and have an authentic and integrated wellness belief system and then be a leader on that in, in your little community in order to hopefully inspire and influence and then also take notice of physical complaints as signposts. 100%. I, I can't help but say to all those around me all the time that the things that they're doing to themselves are not good, where, you know, you, you really shouldn't drink Coca-Cola and, oh, that's not good, you know. And, of course, I don't get very good responses. But if it comes from a few different people, then you do respond. You might have a negative response as an individual to one person saying don't drink Coca-Cola and then the second person and then the third. People come to me, for example, not because they've heard about me from someone but because they've heard about me from three people. And it's the same with things like Coca-Cola and, and sugar and cheesecake and meat. It's the same where people hear about it from one place and then the second place and then the third place and go, Oh, my God. Well, better better actually have a little think about this. Yeah, <laughs> And, yeah, there's information everywhere now about everything. And we all get lost and we get led down, as they say, the garden path. But if it doesn't work quickly and well, if it's not obvious and simple and cheap and effective, then it's probably not the right thing. If it's expensive, if it's difficult, if it's complicated – then it's not the right thing. You can generally go on those simple rules. So, yeah, it's being authentic is good, but you can't force this stuff onto other people. You can only be a good example. Like, why are you happy all the time? Why do you stand up straight all the time? Why are you feeling energetic all the time and generous all the time? Oh, it's because da 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 And they say, oh, I can't do that. Oh, you don't have to start that way. What you do is you start by doing this, 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 and this, like I start. And so it's normal dialogue between people. But don't expect everyone to give up everything 
straight away. But doing the right thing for them, which might mean to stop their alcohol, they have to stop meat. It needs knowledge, understanding, and people are complicated. There's not one answer for everyone. So the steps through from illness to health, intricate. You need to do the right thing for your condition at the time. You try and do everything at once. You won't do the one thing you actually need to do. You might try and live a healthy lifestyle, but you will avoid that one little difficulty, which is the only thing you really needed to do. So it's a, an interesting situation we're all in now. But yeah, the only answer is finding out the truth, working on yourself and finding people that have had success. And we all do it. I mean, the most popular books for sale now are books on health, of course. And the most popular things on the internet are things to do with personal development and health. So we're all in that situation now. Many people go to allied or alternative health practitioners, mostly who work from the outside in terms of treatments and supplements and prescriptions. And their clients have most likely heard the concept, the body can heal itself. Do you believe this is really possible for the many conditions we see in our community and that we've touched on a bit during this podcast? And the body can heal itself on all levels and even the struggle of trying to heal it gives us the growth that we need. We need to tackle our problems and we all struggle with our own issues, whether it be the paths of our lives, um, being honest and open in relationship, fixing a lower back problem, curing osteoporosis, battling cancer, all of these issues, weight issues, they're all things that we're dealing with all the time. All of us have our own demons to face. And we face them all the way through our lives. In old age, we have maybe different problems to deal with. And as a child, you have different problems to deal with. So as a five-year-old, there's a, a struggle. As a teenager, there are things to deal with. As an adult, there's things to deal with. And it's always working on your weakness and using your strengths. And it's different issues. Now, whether it's massive diagnosed medical problems or whether it's little things like trying to get a little bit of order into your life so that your processes and simple things that you go through on a daily level are more comfortable and easy. It all depends on where you're at, who you are. But all of these things are, are relative functions, all of them. And that's our purpose on in existence is to keep on making balance. Look within yourself and see what needs to be harmonized, what needs to be balanced. And that's what happens in nature. And we're learning from nature. We're learning from the universe how to make balance constantly. And we watch nature. We learn from the universe around us how to make balance. Balance is the natural state and always compensating and coming back to balance. We're tired, so we sleep and then we feel better and it gives us pleasure and it gives us comfort and it makes us move forward as a human being. You're hungry, you eat, and that makes balance. But if we overeat, that creates struggle. So we should eliminate the things that create struggle and devour and learn and grow and understand the things that gives us pleasure and allows us to be balanced. So eliminate the struggles in your lives. And it's complicated. Yeah, it's not simple. And everyone has different issues. There's not one overall thing. It depends on your age. It depends on your condition. We all have different issues. And the only way is by surrendering to the healing of the body and surrendering to the nature of the body. We can't heal anything. It all comes from somewhere else. The fact that you have little cells in your body willing to cooperate and fix everything is a gift. Whether we can fulfill the complete healing of ourselves or not doesn't really matter because if you get rid of your cancer or fix your osteoporosis, there's something else that now you need to move on to. And the joy of change and growth is what we need to learn. When you're scared, you want everything to stay the same. When you progress into some level of understanding, you realize that change is the only constant in the universe, as Maharishi used to say. 
And you revel in that change. You delight in the changing clouds, in the changing buildings, in the changing body. It's wonderful to be young. It's wonderful to be an adult. And it's wonderful to be old. Illness is wanting everything to stay the same and using all our resources to try and stay the same. It's not healthy. But as you get healthy, you realize that it's difficult for people, I know. But knowing these things allows you to face the challenges. So in 40 years from now, some people listening to this podcast will remember these simple words of it's wonderful to be old and it's normal to have change in your lives and it'll give them some pause and not panic about getting old. And that's the lovely thing about knowledge is it takes away the fear of the unknown, as I was saying earlier. We all have challenges, but the only real healing is that the body heals itself. So if you cut yourself... All you can do is set up the circumstances for healing. In other words, clean the wound, put a Band-Aid on it, and watch the body heal. We didn't heal it. We just set up the circumstances for healing. And that's what we do. The body can overcome amazingly difficult things by setting up the circumstances. The circumstances might be doing push-ups every morning. The circumstances might be giving it good food to work with. The circumstances might be learning how to breathe deeply or meditate or all of those things. Do push-ups, breathe deeply, meditate and eat well. Maybe you need to do all of those things and what you need to do is what you need to do and you do it and you get great results. And then if you back down on doing those things, which is you're eating well, you're meditating, but you're not doing your push-ups and you're not feeling that good, then you have to hear that. Do what you need to do. There's no other choice. That's the way the world works. As we know, you have to get up and you have to go to work, and then people value your efforts and give you some resource so that you can survive. We're very lucky in Australia, but other countries, it's a bit tougher. And if you don't have your act together and you don't buy the oil, if you don't have the money for the fuel, your house isn't warm and you freeze to death. But that's the nature of nature and that's the nature of the world that we live in. We need to have our act together, have the repercussions of our actions on a subtle level, look and see how other people are having success and understand that if you do the right thing, you get a good result. And that's how the body works. If you do the right thing, it has a good result. And those right things we have to learn from other people around us. Now, you go to these different therapists. They might work on you, stick needles in you. They might give you herbs that fix your bowel problems or your hemorrhoids, fix your liver, whatever their diagnostic metaphor is. Some of them might have a diagnostic metaphor of your aura needs fixing. Others might have a diagnostic metaphor for exactly the same diagnosis as, oh, well, this is coming from your past life. Another person might have a different diagnostic metaphor for your illness, which is exactly the same illness. You've just gone to a different therapist and that therapist will say, well, it's genetic and you've got cancer because it's bad luck. Now, they're all different diagnostic tools for exactly the same condition. It's their perception. It's what you do about it in the end in your lives that really matter. So those tools that they're using, hopefully they help you get a little bit of relief in your life and a little bit of healing. But in the end, it's your lifestyle that matters. It's what you do that matters. That's what causes the problems. And even if you're born with problems and it's nothing to do with what you are doing, In other words, you're living in an environment that has contaminated your blood. You're living in an environment which, by mistake, you've ended up toxic. Maybe you're in a situation where you're a child and your mother gave you lots of Coca-Cola, lovingly gave you Coca-Cola, and not knowing that it was going to cause serious illnesses. But you're in that situation now where you're sick, and now it's your problem. And you need to deal with that. And being your problem, you need to do the right things that then give you the right results. And you find those right things by questioning, by understanding, by trying different things and look inside yourself and you'll see 
by looking inside yourself that there's little voices in there, there's feelings in there, knowing the right thing. You know what the right thing there is. But how you deal with those, you have to start talking to people, do your research, look deeply, try different things, give up on the things that don't work. So, yeah, we do heal ourselves, and it is the only way to heal is through the body. The body heals itself. We can't heal it. Even if you have surgery and drugs, go to the hospital, the doctor at the end of the operation will say that what we can do now is cross our fingers and hope that the person recovers. They can only set up the circumstances. And more often than not, we've all heard the same story over and over again that unfortunately, even though the operation was a success, the patient died. And that's what happens, yeah? And people heal spontaneously. We just have to pay attention, learn the rules, and there's rules to existence, which is what I was trying to explain on a social level where we need to go out there and earn money or gather resources for survival. There's rules, and there's rules for all levels of existence, whether it's on the spiritual level, the intellectual level, the emotional level, or the physical level, and those rules are the same from the bottom to the top. Basically, you need to do certain things to get certain results. And we learn them as a child, we learn them as a teenager, and then we learn them as an adult. And we progress by learning those rules and following them and constantly adapting to the changes in our lives. So, yeah, the body heals itself and it's all a gift. And we can only set up the circumstances for healing. That's all we can do. The way we set up circumstances of meditation, and meditation is so simple. You just stop and amazing things happen. You just go into a state of being. It's easy for me to say that, but it's a very difficult thing to do, to just stop. It's easy for me to say, just eat well. Like my yoga teacher used to say when people said to him, well, what do you do when you're smoking and you want to stop? How do you stop smoking? And he just laughed and said, well, don't smoke. It's easy. Just stop. And on the simplest level, that's the truth. But you go through a lot of stuff. But in the end, that's all you can do is just stop. Because in the first three days, the challenge of smoking is very different to the challenge of not smoking after a week, which is a different challenge after a month. The challenges keep changing. There's no one particular tool. You just stop and don't smoke again. And a lot of the things are like that with our healing. You, If you've got a sore, you've cut yourself, you have to follow the rules. You have to wash the wound. You have to stitch it together. You have to put a Band-Aid on it. That's the rules. You don't leave it with dirt. And it's the same on all levels of, of our physiology and on our emotional levels and also our intellectual and spiritual levels. There's the rules to follow depending on what kind of cut it is, what kind of injury different tools need to be applied. And a lot of amazing things to think about in what you've just said. Yes, indeed. Andre, we've got so much more to talk about. And so what I think we're going to do is to split this podcast in half and relaunch with another podcast uh, in a few days, which follows up all of this amazing content. So for all of our listeners, we will be uh, publishing another part uh, where we continue this amazing conversation on 2019 and what you can be doing for your wellness. And that wraps it up for today. And we hope you've enjoyed this episode just as much as we've enjoyed putting it together for you. Any listeners who would like to learn more about Andre's work or Rioho can connect and follow on Instagram and LinkedIn using the address of Rioho Wellness. We spell Rioho, R-Y-O-H-O, and then add wellness on the end, obviously. Episode notes will be loaded up and available at riohowellness.com, which is the master website. And just a few more things before you take off. Number one, do you have a health issue or question you would like explored in one of our podcasts? Please submit it to us at the website where there is a contact page, riohowellness.com website. Number two, would you enjoy being notified by very short email every time we do something on Rioja Wellness? This includes notification of our up and coming wellness podcasts and other things towards our tipping point. If you want to receive that, go to riojowellness.com and drop in your email address and you'll get the very next one. And we hope you really enjoy it. 
Thanks everyone for listening and thank you Andre for another fantastic episode. See you next time.